Welcome to the Career Paths Podcast. Uh, my name is Gavin Brunson. We have producer Jason in the back, and I'm followed with Luke Bridges. Uh, you might be wondering where uh, Pat Lynch is. Where uh, is he? <laughs> we got rid of him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but we have a special guest today, Coach Rodney Mays. Uh, and I'm also going to give Luke Bridges a little time to uh, introduce himself. Oh, well, thank you so much, Gavin. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Luke Bridges, as he said about three times. I'm a senior <laughs> basketball player, also on the team with uh, my boy G. Brun slash Gavin Brunson. Um, I'm a theater and communications double major, so this is sort of my alley, but a little out of my wheelhouse, just a little bit. But um, yeah, I've been here all four years. Me and Gavin both have. Um, we both do numerous things on campus, and we're excited to be here. All right, Coach Mays, can you tell us about yourself, where you're from, where you went to school, and what your career path led you to college, Lion College. Gotcha. First of all, I appreciate you guys for having me on, man. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely something I was looking forward to today. So uh, just a little bit about myself, you know, um, college basketball coach, um, went to school in West Virginia, originally from Patterson, New Jersey, you know, um, got four kids and a wife and, you know, all, all, all of that together, man, led me to where I am today you know, to be a, a good foundation for a husband and a dad, you know. I'm um, just starting off um, four years of college and went to play um, professional basketball for about eight years overseas in a lot of different countries, you know, Argentina, um, France, Slovakia, played for some big-time leagues in FIBA Americas, you know, uh, some really great players I played along with. Um, that experience um, helped me grow as a basketball player but also gave me some different experiences to be at a – Tap into coaching a little bit, you know, because believe it or not, my when I graduated from college, man, after four years, I say I'm playing professional basketball. I was like, I am done. <laughs> basketball, I'm retired. I'm going to live the life a little bit. And I was Honestly, I want to be a police officer, you know, because my, um, my dad was in the military. My brother, older than me, um, by two years, he was assistant warden in the state prison, you know, and then my younger brother, he was um, in the Army as well. You know, my grandfather did too, so kind of that little – background in military and law enforcement, you know, was in my blood a little bit, you know, but once playing overseas and, you know, I had, I had a little minor setback for injury my rookie year a little bit. So I got to coaching over there. Some guys had me over there, you know, putting me to work a little bit. So I got started how I was, I was with the juniors. So juniors in Europe, um, they play with a senior team. You know, so those are like college age students. Mm -hmm. um, they could be anywhere from 16 to youngsters going up to about 21, 22. Those mm -hmm. are guys that probably don't get a lot of minutes on our senior team. But um, I was able to do that and help develop some of those guys. And I kind of got a little passion for it, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, my agent helped me out with that. Um, as different teams I played on, I always kind of tapped in a little bit of, hey, experience this, this coaching a little bit, you know. So by the time I retired, you know, in 2013, um, kind of loved it. I, I did it for about four four of those years. I'm an eight. Um, I helped coach a couple of those teams or whatnot. Um, it was good for my growth. So once I retired, you know, I wanted to coach college basketball. I, I had a career path change, you know. <laughs> um, so I exit out of the the police thing now. Mind you, the first thing I did do, though, I took the police <laughs> test in Cobb County. Okay. in georgia and i passed it with flying colors gavin uh -oh. okay. little, you know but <laughs> i still i still i had that itch though you know in, in basketball when you do it for so long man you just don't just throw it away sometime you know mm -hmm. so um i was fortunate enough to get hired um at the university of west georgia and say division two school you know and i did that for about five years there and um you know assistant it, there i was assistant yep start off as assistant actually i started off as a volunteer coach, you know, I was trying to break into the profession of, of college basketball, which is very, very hard. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you hear guys say it all the time, you got to pay your dividends, you know, and it ain't where you, where you start at some time and it's how you finish, you know, in your career and stuff. So I put my time in a little bit for that year and, and grew up the charts a little bit, you know, um, we did really well there and ended up getting a promotion to another job as associate head coach um, at Point University. Mm -hmm. Um, stayed there for about three years, um, and that led me to where I am now to be a head coach at Lyon College here in Batesville, Arkansas. So, so how was that? You know, you you said you were an associate head coach. This is your full time, like I don't want to say like your first like head coaching position, but it's like your main 
first head coaching right. position, right? How is that different than, I don't know, the other like assistant coaches or how do you think it's going so far? Well, the the biggest adjustment, you got to be, you're the head man now. You, you call all the shots. Regardless if you're an associate head coach, you still got to go through the head coach and, and the chain of command a little bit, you know? Um, but I, I was just fortunate enough to be assistant um, under some great coaches and stuff, man. It really paved the way to show me how to be a head coach, you know? Um, my head coach, there was that point, Jake Deer, you know, um, when he, when he gave me a promotion of associate head coach, he said, coach, Hey, run this, help run this program. Like you was the head coach, you know, it was really tremendous in my growth to be a head coach, to be here at Lion. Cause probably without that, I'd probably be lost. I'll be a young head coach just trying to find his way a little bit, but you know, you always got to have good mentors and good supervisors. Um, you know, that, that help you out. But I, I don't really look at it as the mentor and stuff, man, the supervisor. Those guys are my friends, you know, and those are guys that I can have that have my back for life, you know. So um, that really helped me to really define who I am as a head coach. Okay. Well, since this is a podcast about careers, what attributes do you think uh, one should have if they're going to try to pursue a career in coaching? The biggest thing I said, you had to be a people's person. Yeah. Okay. Because, like, people person can mean anything, you know. Um, it's very broad, man. Um, you got to deal with a, and, and, and deal with a lot of different people and, you know, um, be very, very outspoken and, and throwing yourself out there a little bit, you know. So public speaking, going to housing, recruit visits, you know, um, going to different leadership conferences and, and meeting different people and, you know, eventually being on a podcast like this today, you know, um, those, those things are tremendous. Um, but definitely being a people's person. Okay. What do you think is, you know, if not the most important, one of the more important aspects of being a, like a head coach, what, att what attribute do you think? Like people's person, right? Um, do you think you need to be a great recruiter or is, is it more of you need to be, you know, a great manager of the players you have? Or do you think it's like all of the above? Well, really, I mean, it's, it's, it's a combination of, of a lot of things, you know, um, to be in this position to be a head coach of any program, high school, um, college, all of that, man. Like, you have to have the mindset of one to be of a servanthood type guy, mm -hmm. be honest with you. You know, that's, that's one of our core values, the servanthood. You know, mm -hmm. you got to be able to do something for somebody else where I'm respecting something in return. You know, and, and, and it is in the in the, just in sports itself, you have to have it, not just in basketball, but football, golf, hockey, uh, baseball, whatever it is, you know, um, you gotta be able to want to give back. You know, um, there's a lot of things that we do and y'all guys notice as athletes that we do that's not even sports related that goes into what we do as athletes, you know, and coaches and stuff, you know. So I think definitely that that's that's definitely how I feel about that. Okay. Uh, what would you say is like on your journey would be like one of your weaknesses or setbacks of going to becoming a, a college coach that you can relate to anybody else? Really is the sometimes we, we want stuff too fast. We rush into it a little bit and not be kind of ready. Mm -hmm. We want what we want first without having to really put the time in. I think that's in life. That's what everybody mm -hmm. wants. We want, yeah. we want, instead of starting off from a volunteer or a part-time position, we want that full-time making six figures, mm -hmm. you know, uh, without investing, you know, our time and effort, you know, what it really takes to be in a position to make those six figures, mm -hmm. you know, and to be that really great coach. Because once you is that, that man, everybody's looking at you and they saying, hey, all right, coach, what do we do? And you mm -hmm. you got to know what, definitely what you're doing, not just coaching, but just definitely running the program from budgeting, you know, um, getting out in the community and community service and stuff, man, and you know, and if you could do that, I think you'd be really good and really successful. How would you describe, you know, we're taking this from more of a, like a player coach standpoint, right? How would you describe your coaching philosophy and, you know, how has it evolved since you became an assistant coach to a head coach and whatnot? Good question, man. Luke, I tell you, y'all guys can test this. I think I'm a player's coach, you know, yeah. Any anything that I do is is all about the players, you know. Um, I'm not a coach where it's all about me, you know, and whatever I want, you know. I think you got to adapt to your players. Um, so, and I think that goes back to the time where I was an athlete, you know, playing four years in college and playing pro for those eight years. That was a lot. It's a lot of time, you know, and you learn a lot and you see a lot. So, my philosophy is just hey, making sure that those guys are good, get the experiences that I got, but even be greater. 
you know, um, and, and if I'm not doing that, man, like I'm not going to have a good a good day or a good week or something, man, because I, I definitely want to treat all my guys really good and make sure they're getting the most out of their experience as a college athlete, you know. Yeah. Um, that's my first and foremost thing, you know, um, I'm always going to have that up at the top of the list and that never change, you know? So, so you said that, um, on your journey coming up to a, being a head coach that your mentors were only your mentors, but they're like your friends and your family with well, being a, um, player coach, how do you take, um, uh, making a team, a team to a family to, uh, from a group of individuals to like cohesion? That's a really great question, Luke. Man, I mean, I'm Gavin, but <laughs> look, that's is 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 tough, man, because you got a lot of different personalities and stuff, you know, and you got to make sure you bring the right guys in your program to make sure they jail and stuff. Um, you know, I think it was really good for us because we start when I got the job here, man. It was it wasn't eighteen, <laughs> it was. nineteen of us, you know, <laughs> it um, was. yeah, it was eight eight to nine, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, to be able to build up where we are now to having 24 guys on the roster is a tremendous thing, you know? Um, but just, I take it as a little combination of different places. I, you know, I coached that and stuff and the philosophies that we did in team bonding and um, getting together and trying to build teams together, um, put all those together to uh, make it to what we are today. You know, here at Lion, there's always something that you could expand on and make better and stuff, you know, but that's what we always trying to do. Um, but I think the, the most of it comes from, the head coach and what he's really mm-hmm. defining, you know, how your team look, how you interact, you know, um, guys going to look at me, how I am with players and, you know, am I treating you well and stuff like that. And hopefully, you know, guys do that the same because they see me because I'm an example, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the walking example and how I carry myself and how I interact with the players. They see it, you know, and it is a trickle effect, like a domino. There you go. So I know you mentioned, um, like team bonding and whatnot, and we all know the importance of that. Do you yourself have like a favorite team bonding moment, either as a player or maybe as a coach or anything like that? I would say I don't – see, I, I think that we didn't really take it as a team bonding because actually we we took a trip to um, – where, where do we go? We're Puerto Rico. Okay. Oh, wow. You know, but we scheduled <laughs> the game. <laughs> hey, we, 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 we scheduled the game. This was at West Georgia, so we scheduled the game because we want to do something nice for our players and stuff. You know, every couple of years, you know, in NCAA, you get to take your team on those trips and stuff, man. But at the same time, it was like, hey, this could be a really good bonding experience, you know. Um, we did it my first year there, and then I and we really built something special, man, because while I was there for five years, you know, we went to NCAA tournament um, three of those years, and we won um, our league two about two times and won the conference tournament um, one time as well. You know, uh, we had it was really successful in what we were doing. Mm-hmm. You know, so we took that whole trip for really a team bonding at the same time, yeah. and it, and that was the you know the outcome for that for that team bonding thing. So I'm always have a special place in my heart for that Puerto Rico. You know, um, hopefully That's in fun. the future here, you know, back, y'all man. two guys won't probably yeah, see. We don't be, we don't be here anymore. I'll come back. I'll come back. Just come back. You got fifth year, right? <laughs> so, um, hopefully, we could definitely be able to do that. But that was some of the top. Um, I know a couple of other things that we did. Um, we took our guys like zip lining and things like that mm-hmm. as well. You know, um, courses and some things where it make you think like panic room and stuff like that. You know. Um, I want to be able to do that with us, your stuff, man. But, you know, D3 got a lot of rules mm-hmm. for around contact peers and stuff. But we got some things in store for our guys this year. So nice. hopefully that'd be better than going to Puerto Rico or doing a zip line. <laughs> hey, yeah. Puerto Rico, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to have to, red, to I'm the red shirt for that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so staying on the topic of, uh, like, team chemistry and whatnot, what is a moment that you've seen as a head coach so far uh, in one of these team bonding activities really just, like, lit your face up just like wow just a wow moment for you as they're competing or doing whatever they're doing just just made you smile just like this is this is what i live for well you know as a coach when you when you're recruiting you don't re- you know one guy you know um everybody gonna bring something different but you got a lot of different personalities and you don't mm-hmm. know how to really go in jail until you really see that that moment where hey yeah guys do get along they they can work together because in the sports you got to work together mm-hmm. for one common goal you know, um, I think I forgot was the name of the event, but on a team bonding, uh, we put everybody like on a log, you know, and we say, hey, just get on the log. 
Um, once they got into law, they didn't know what they had to do. <laughs> they had to figure it out because we told them, hey, now you got to get an order from your signed jersey number. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. From zero all the way to the highest without falling off. Mm-hmm. But as soon as one guy fall off, you got to start all over. You know, <laughs> so if you get on number 22 and you got to number 41, mm-hmm. you know, um, you got to start all over. That's a long way, you know. <laughs> so to see guys work together and figure stuff out, you know, that was that was the biggest thing, you know, because um, in athletics. You got to figure stuff out sometime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we won't win every single game, but every game ain't easy, mm-hmm. you know. So you look at it it's like it's crunch time with. Five minutes left on the clock, you know, um, can we count on our players to be able to get it done, you know, and and think the game, you know, mm-hmm. have an IQ. So to see that, those guys bonding, figure stuff out in an IQ raise, that's, mm-hmm. that's, 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 that's really good. So hopefully that answered your question. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so speaking of, you know, talking about difficult decisions and whatnot, can you talk about a time where you've had to make a difficult, like, decision in a game? And, you know, maybe how you handled it or how, what was the impact that it, you know, the team? Yeah. Stuff like that. Well, I say, man, as coaches, man, we make a lot of decisions. Sometimes we'll be right, sometimes we'll be wrong. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to make decisions um, that's going to be good for the team and stuff, you know, but also as a coach, you want to be a good role model for guys and show them how to, to be a guy. You know, um, my motto is to be the ultimate stand up man and help you be a, one day be a great father and a great husband and to be able to teach them life lessons and stuff. You mm-hmm. know, I'll say I probably had a couple of these. I'm not going to name out just one instant particular instance or whatnot, but you had a time we had to probably sit a guy on the bench sometime. It's probably your, your best player, you know, it's not really to punish him to think, Hey, I'm just the head coach. So I can send you, but you want to learn life lessons, yeah. you know, a little bit when things ain't going right. Or <laughs> so the guy ain't making enough shots. or he got bad attitude, you know, or he got bad body language and it's all about him. It's all about him. No, it's not really, you know, cause one day when we are men, you know, we're here to household supposedly, you know, so when you get married, man, and you have a kid, you know, um, you got to teach those life lessons to the kid, but also now it's not just about you. Okay, yeah. you got to make sure that your wife is taken care of, your kids are taken care of. You know, that's your responsibility now. You know, so I kind of relate that to the basketball court, especially because I'm a man and we a men's basketball team, you know, to be able to show those examples. And hopefully when that do happen, guys could grow from that instance, you know. So it's mm-hmm. not like a punishment at all. You know, it's more about growing in the development of who you are as a man. So, so if you're, for the viewers um, – how do you define adversity? And when it comes to your team, how do you handle it? Or how do you expect your team to handle it? You know, adversity is always supposed to be tough situations, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, athletics are always tough situations, man. You know, uh, when it when it comes to our team, I like to I like to listen first. I'm a listening type coach, you know, and and process the information to make sure that I'm giving my team the best of me and how I can help them achieve whatever it is that we're going through, their goals, aspirations, whatever it is, you know, um, and then give my guys a voice. You know, I think it's all about that. Um, if you give guys a voice and you're able to listen and stuff, I think that that'll conquer a lot of stuff, especially when you're in tough situations and stuff. Um, Cause everybody got different viewpoints, different opinions and things like that. Um, I think all my guys, hopefully you could test it that I give guys a voice and opinion and had their reasoning and talk stuff out before mm-hmm. just coming to a common decision or ground or what's what, no matter what it is. It could be mm-hmm. it could be over a play or it could be a discrepancy of, hey, you're supposed to be here or there, X and O type stuff, you know. But um I think if you could have that type of mind heading into like adversity or whatnot, you could overcome that. So when you start recruiting, right, what do, you, what do you look for when you recruit players, right? And how do you evaluate, you know, how they will fit into the program developmental-wise or maybe not even that, just, just fitting into the program personality-wise, stuff like that? You know, um, a lot of coaches probably look at a lot of talent and stuff. First, I would say to be an elite team, Okay. Um, I, 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 everything that we do won't be elite, you know, don't say it'll be good or great, but I, I, I look for guys I think that could gel and got a good attitude 
with the guys that we already have on our campus that's coming back, you know, um, how they interact with their teammates, their coach, you know, can I coach this athlete, you know, that's first and foremost, you know, and that because it's different stages into recruiting, you know, and then you you could go off of next how, how the kid um, handle adversity on a basketball court when stuff ain't going right, you know, because uh, we just talked about adversity, you know, um, is he gonna handle it right how we handle ours, you know, um, then how is he really playing, you know, yeah. I'm a, I'm a type of guy I've been playing sports for a long time, you know. I got a little knack. I'm not going to say I'm the best at it, man. Uh, but we had a lot of good teams. But I could tell if a guy could help us out or he could actually play basketball, I could help him grow his game within probably the first minute or two minutes he, he's running on the basketball court or is mm-hmm. he doing shoot around, you know. Um, those, But first and foremost, those are the top um, things that I look for definitely in recruiting, you know. Uh, recruiting is a long process, though. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there's, there's, there's thousands of basketball players out here or baseball and football athletes and stuff, you know. So it's definitely a process. But mine, I think, for where we're at, we're a championship-type team. You know, um, we want to look for winners. You know, programs that teach the right way. They got definitely got good kids that fit our mission, what we do here at Lion College, you know, and um, it's going to gel and thrive once they get here. So... Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, piggybacking off of development, um, let's put you in a scenario. Say you're recruiting somebody. Say he's what? Let's say six eight, big man. Okay, but he's looking to move towards more of a like guard facilitator type position. Okay. Are you more like prone to help him with that, or are you like let's build off your strengths first? Or does it depend on who you already have? Yeah. Right? Or does it depend on who I have? Good stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't. That's a good question, man. Um, you know, I I don't limit guys. You know, we always gonna work on your strengths. I'm not gonna change a game at all. You know, um, a guy that want to grow and develop his game is a good thing because a guy that don't want to, you know, how can you really get better? Mm-hmm. You know, so um, for a guy that's six eight, man, if he could play a four three and a two, I'm all for it, man. You know. Um, but we definitely got better to own those skills and to see where he at. We qualify. You got to be able to dribble, pass, and shoot the basketball. Definitely, mm-hmm. you know. Um, that's the same thing if you're you're a tight end in football and trying to be a slot wide receiver or a split end. You know, mm-hmm. um, those those different qualities you got to have. But for the development as a coach, that's what you want. You know, um, guys always got aspirations of trying to play pro basketball. So. Mm-hmm. Six eight in pro basketball, you a two or three. Yeah, you know, yeah. you might got some that's probably you could play the stretch four, you know, mm-hmm. or some European games and things like that. But um, for the most part, I don't think it's just who you have on your team because if I got a Luke Bridges six eight, you know, and another kid that's six eight, but he's a better shooter, but Luke is better inside. Why can't I have both? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so I think that only makes sense. You know, and then. As as the development piece come, you say, "Hey, Luke, you're all inside. All right, let's try to get your shot up. Let's try to get your ball skills up." And the other guy, whoever he is, coming in. All right, now let's try to get you some little post game going. You mm-hmm. know, so it'd be multi dimensional because how we play, you know, we want one through four, to, um, dribble pass and shoot the basketball, and switching on defense and have good lateral movement. You know, so I mean that's a good question, but I, I, I take them all. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um. So I guess that kind of answers how do you approach player development, but what about in terms of personal growth instead of just like skills? What do you what do you hope to see, you know, from a freshman to a senior? There's a lot to go into that cuz when freshmen come in, they don't know what they're getting themselves into. Yeah. At all, it's a different ball game from playing AAU and playing high school, you know. Um the biggest one is adjustment, you know, to college life. Um, how to really be a college student athlete and managing everything that you got going on. Mm-hmm. You know, um, everything is fast paced now. You're not on your own time. So some guys, you got to set alarms. Some guys, you got to have alarms set on your phone as a coach to make sure they get into where they're going and yeah. make sure they got the schedules and stuff, you know. Um, but that's what we sign up for, you know. Um, that's me doing my servanthood to my players and making sure they get the best out of their athletic um, college education and stuff, you know. and um, not just all about sports is in the classroom of, you know, study habits, um, making sure you do your work and things like that. 
uh, making sure that all my guys graduate, make sure that they, um, if they want to go get a master's, you know, make sure they got the GPA and the, and the skills and stuff to be able to make that happen once they graduate with a bachelor's, you know, so that's all into that growth, that development, especially for our freshmen, you know, um, the biggest one is their adjustment and helping them be adjust to be, you know, a young adult and a college athlete. Yeah. There you go. So we're going to go at a more personal view for this question. When you first got here, right? For anybody that's viewing this, it was basically our coach, because me and Gavin weren't recruited by Coach Mays originally. Mm-hmm. We got recruited by a different coach. He got a job offer. He took a job offer, had a different school, took over half the team with it. So Coach Mays gets here, and there's probably 10, 8 people maybe? Nine. Nine? Nine, there you go, <laughs> right in between. So for you, Coach Mays, what was the biggest like challenge, you know, um, or just like some pros and cons of taking just a, a brand new team because you couldn't recruit anybody at that point. Right, so you right. just these are players you don't know at all and you have not recruited. So what are, what are the biggest you know challenges that was for you when you just started here? I would say the, the man it, it could be a number of things, but you know I, I don't complain at all. You know before taking a job, I knew I was getting myself into. You know mm-hmm. um, I think what we had about three weeks. For our first game when if, I yeah got here. we played in October that year and you came in yeah, October, October first yeah. I came in October first yeah. yeah so yeah um, the biggest thing was that's something I wasn't really used to of starting you know so when I came to y'all guys we was already in preseason with my other um, team yeah. you know um, so making that adjustment I had to scale back just a little bit to make sure hey y'all guys was in shape getting what you got to do and be prepared to play a game yeah. you know and it was a back to back game it wasn't just hey you got one game you wait two three days see what yeah. you did and you go we was in a tournament you know mm-hmm. get some big time schools yeah. you know so um, really it was how fast paced as a head coach now you know being an associate coach can I get my guys to really buy in to what we doing um, be really great teammates you know um, don't think negative about the situation but let's work on development getting better you know I believe what we had Really, one I'll say this: one guy that was really experienced, got a lot of playing time from the previous um, team. Ben. You know, oh, Grant, Grant Grant Patterson. Oh, gee, yeah, you know, um, Ben was on a team. Trent was on a team, but neither I don't think Ben Harley played. Yeah, um, neither did Trent. Trent either, yeah. But I mean, they was contributors. They won. The biggest thing is they they was part of a team that won the AMC. Yeah, you know, during COVID and stuff. So that was something to definitely build on. Um, but I think. The guys, y'all, and y'all too included, man, really bought in because a lot of people think that we overachieve, you know, going in there. Like, well, we won 10 games. Mm-hmm. Damn, that, was, that was a lot. We came in with nine. <laughs> that was uh-huh. a lot, right? We came in with nine. We had a lot of games. Where we, we were playing we with like six guys and five games, and mm-hmm. we were on the road in a conference tournament, and we just had five exactly because one of our guys got sick in the hotel and couldn't come out. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Um, to be able to do that, um, I wouldn't take none of that back. Um, it helped me grow as a coach. I think it helped some of our guys grow as basketball players, too, because we had a lot of players in time um we had guys that was freshman of the year uh we had first and second no second and third team all conference players you know was topping um different categories you know mm-hmm. it was something to build on but i think all of that together helped us get to where we are today you know so but that was it was definitely the challenge <laughs> that was about the time management and getting mm-hmm. the preparation for everything you know um mm-hmm. not having an assistant coach coming in that you know, he never coached at all before either. He was, he was a player, you mm-hmm. know, coming from training. So um, it was definitely adjustment. So built it from the ground up. There's <laughs> quite, yeah, quite little, yeah. fresh, fresh start. That's about as fresh as a start you can get. Yeah. It is, man. Mm-hmm. So um, that, it, it helped a lot. Though. I, I tell you that, you know, it's something to be able to look back on and reflect or whatnot. You know, uh, everybody got their stories, but I think I got a really great one. So, <laughs> yeah. well, I guess. To to wrap it up, um, put you on the soapbox here. Okay. Uh, you can tell any player anything. What would it be? Coming in from life, coming in for basketball, leaving basketball, anything. What would you say? What advice would you give them? Man, don't don't be afraid to show what your passion is for. You know, um, if you got that passion to be you know, a doctor in college, but use basketball, you know, to be able to get what you want to achieve your goals. I think um, that's, that's a big thing in life, you know, but if you come in and you got a passion for basketball, definitely have that passion and give 110% effort in everything that you do and being in, in that program, you know, um, but don't ever, don't ever give up on anything you're trying to do in life. You know, you can always do it. 
Um, always be open, you know, to adjustment and change because life ain't how you want it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to preach spiritually to you, but um, <laughs> God got a path for all of us, man. And, you know, he, he definitely got, you know, what we're going to do in life, but you got to let life come, but you got to take it head on, but keep your passion, your goals and aspirations high. You know, don't ever say yourself short because you do anything in life that you definitely want to do. So. Uh, I would like to thank Rodney Mays for coming on to the podcast today. Uh, one thing I really took out of it was I loved how he talked about player development and how he would take one player, increase his weaknesses while still uh, rebounding off of his strengths. Uh, <laughs> uh, I actually really enjoyed his um his like recruiting philosophy. Uh, normally, you know. Obviously, you have to recruit talent, but that really wasn't his first uh, mention. He was talking about more of recruiting character and how that dynamic fits within the team, right? And I think, you know, from our freshman to senior year, I think we've really seen that kind of build differently, especially during our senior year and junior year where we won conference Mm -hmm. and all the guys actually uh, gelled and whatnot. And so I, I think that's just an example of him saying something and it coming true on the stage or on the court, right? Before we sign off, we're going to give uh, Jason the age-old question. Uh, where can you find us? So you can find the Career Pathways podcast on 99.97% of platforms, the same number of germs that get killed with Germex. I <laughs> sound a little bit far away, and that's because I'm sitting down. Um, so sorry that I sound a little little, little echoey today. But yeah, I'm Jason. I'm producer Jason. And we're signing off. Yeah. Peace. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Lion College and by Kilt Studios.